Welcome back to Challenge to Build. My name is Paul Michael. Sorry that my shop is a little bit of a mess. Uh, I spent the last three or four days uh, working on my drag link. The last video that I shot last week was focused on the center link for the steering and we weren't able to finish it up in that video and I proceeded to work on it in the following week. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, um, you can kind of stay up to date on what I do in the shop when I'm not filming videos. Um, I try to do like a daily picture or even like a small video, uh, but Twitter definitely is my platform of choice. You can follow me at challenge to build at Diesel Viking 60. There will be a link in the description below and there will probably be something flashing on the screen right about here right now. So if you have a Twitter account, follow me there and you can keep up to, you can stay up to date on what I'm doing in the garage uh, on a more regular basis. However, <clears throat> good news to report, the center link is done. In today's new tool segment, I wanted to focus primarily on grinding wheels, flat discs, and the fiber back pad. With doing all of the grinding that I was doing on my center link over the past couple of days, I have burned up a lot of flat discs, grinding wheels, and the fiber back pads. And the newest tool to add to the arsenal is the backing pad for the four and a half inch wheel, actually. Over the years, I've spent a lot of time using grinding wheels and flat discs. I never really put much time into the fiber back pad. It's more of a less what you would find on like sanding discs and the commercial grade belt sanders. I have kind of switched over from grinding wheels and flat discs to the fiber back pad uh, due to the cost of replacement for the pads themselves. The initial investment was probably like $15 for the backing pad and then a case of discs, which it's not to say I will not stop using the grinding wheels and flat discs. They all have their own place in metalworking. Um, as far as the new tool, it's nothing It's nothing new. They've been out forever. Um, it's just that I haven't spent much time looking at them or using them, but it's simply just put the wheel on the grinder, take your pad, put the collar on, tighten them down, and Essentially, you are ready to go to town for grinding. They come in various different grits. I believe the strongest one I saw was 24, and I think they go all the way up to 320 or maybe even higher than that. So this is my new tool. I put a coat of paint on it last night when I was done in the garage. And thankfully, it either froze or dried. Um, Regardless, I can touch it. So we're gonna do a final install and uh, hopefully spend some time cleaning up the garage and then uh, spend some time working on the bump stops, at least for the rear. For the front, I think what we'll do is we'll pull the motor and trans out, but we still got a little bit of work to do before we do that. So for the next couple of minutes, you're gonna see a time lapse of cleaning the garage and then we'll put the center link in and then we'll focus on the rear bump stops and carry on. You're gonna have to excuse me, I'm bundled up. It is 25 degrees out in the garage right now. I don't have any insulation in my ceiling or in the shop as of right now. So that's gonna have to be a challenge to build episode later on down the road. So I'm bundled up. I got a little bit of coffee left. Kick the music and let's get to work.
In today's quick tip, it's still all about abrasives. And for today's tip, it is about these fiber-backed sandy discs. Um, like I said before, they come in all various different sizes. Uh, I believe the biggest is nine inch, the smallest is four. Um, and regardless of how good these are, they still wear out. Um, as you can see, on a four and a half inch wheel, obviously we like to use the edges of the grinder to hog down the material faster. So what happens is the edges burn up really, really quick, which makes the inside of the pad almost useless. So what you're able to do is if you start with the larger wheels, like my seven inch, I have a backing pad in seven inch as well. As you can see, the edges burn up really, really quick. But the tip is I use a lot of five inch materials uh, in the shop for my grinder. But if you take a five inch wheel on the seven inch pad, I'm gonna use the collar as a template. You take a good pair of scissors. Now granted, you will wear out your scissors over time, but if you take your scissors, what you can do is use a template on the top and essentially you cut all of the bad material off of the edge which allows you to have the edge back on the sanding disc. Now what I did was this is a four and a half inch wheel this is a five inch wheel. I like to cut them to five inches so this way here when you put them back on there's a little material on the outside edge of your backing pad which allows a little bit more flex when you're grinding in various angles and corners. So you make the one investment for a seven inch wheel. As you can see, this one took some damage, but even this one has the ability to be cut down and recycled into another four and a half or five inch wheel, which allows you to spend the money once and use them twice. And this is my quick tip. So now that the shop is cleaned up a little bit, I think what we'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, I'll pull down the center link and uh, I will do a install on the center link. It's two simple bolts, so it's not gonna take that much time. I'll give you guys a closer look at how this is going to work for me. And then once I think that is in, we'll be able to, to scratch it off of the punch list. And then we will move on to number three, which is the bump stops for the front and rear. I don't think I'm gonna do the fronts until after I pull the motor and trans out. But before I can pull the motor and trans out, I have to fab in the exhaust and the drive shaft. So I think we'll handle the front bump stops later on, but we can at least focus on the rears. So I'm gonna put that in and get moving on the afternoon. Shop dog to the garage now too. Say hi to YouTube, everybody. Hi. Say you're a good boy. Say you're a good boy. You gonna help Daddy work on the truck? Don't get in the way, huh? Don't get in the way, huh? You're a good boy. Now you may have noticed um, these are not standard tie rod ends. What I ended up doing was I took a page out of uh, what the guys do with four wheel drive front ends and use hind joint steering links. Um, 
So what I ended up doing was drilling out my spindle to a three quarter inch bolt. And yes, I will eventually change these out to at least grade eight hardware. Right now I'm just using grade two uh, for initial mock-up. Um, so I will change this out for grade eight along with a capsulated nut, but I drilled out my spindles to a three quarter inch bolt. And then what it allows me to do is use a heim joint. The heim joints came from Barnes four wheel drive. I'll have a link in the description with their website. I bought everything off of Amazon. I will also link the specific heim joints that I'm using on this truck <laughs> in the description below. So the steering does go lock to lock, right? Who's that? Go give it. <clears throat> um, the Heim joints, I'll give you a closer look. I don't know if you can see this, but I had to soften the edge on the top Heim joint, the top of this Heim joint, and then also the bottom of the spindle. So that way it's more of a ball and socket kind of setup. So this way here, when you steer left and right, what happens is there's an arc in the spindles. And in the arc of the spindles, what was happening was as you were making a sharp turn left and sharp turn, turn right, they were binding up, um, which was hindering the lock to lock motion um, left to right. So it took a little bit of time, a little bit of adjustment, but overall, I am super satisfied with the overall setup. And then what's gonna happen down here is I have my link bar. <laughs> I have my link bar that utilizes hind joints again. And then the bottom one uses misalignment spacers, 5 ace misalignment spacers. So then this bar will go in to the steering link and then the steering gear to finalize the steering. So now with the steering center link installed, um, I think I'm gonna end up changing my idea for this video. I try to keep them right around like 15 minutes or so, and we still have one very important piece to take care of with this video, and that is scratching it off of the list. So as of today, well, the drag link is now finished. So that is, um, if you follow me on Twitter, like I said, you can keep up to date on what I do in the shop on a more uh, regular basis. Um, I am on Instagram and I actually created a TikTok account, believe it or not. So if you search challenge the build on any social media platform, you should be able to find me. Um, I was going to get involved in doing the rear bump stops but since I've been out here in the garage, the temperature has dropped quite a bit and um, I'm actually kind of getting cold. So with this video, I was able to bring in my two new segments in one video, which I'm gonna try to do um, from this point forward. I would like to try to bring you guys a little bit more value in the video. So I will try to implement the quick tip and new tool in each of my videos. Um, that's my plan. I can't promise you in every video that that's what's gonna happen. I am trying to build a show or a channel to showcase the work that happens in the garage and then the tools that I use and the tricks that I use to do some of the work in my shop and the things that I've learned over the years. So I think we'll pick up on number three, at least for the rear bump stops in the next video. Um, hopefully by then I'm going to put a order in for the exhaust parts because the exhaust is a pretty big key, uh, key component for me to be able to remove the engine and trans. Um, so that about does it for my time on Challenge to Build today. Remember, I want you to get out there and challenge your build. Um, remember also the build is perspective. It could mean whatever you want it to be. So whether it's writing a paper for school or building a kick-ass truck like this, the build is anything. So I want you to challenge it. Also, normally I always thank my subscribers, 
but I also want to thank all my viewers because all of the views count as well. So thank you to my viewers and my subscribers. Also, if you are not a subscriber, I noticed that there's 70% of you that watch my, my videos aren't subscribers. So do me a favor, go ahead and click that subscribe button, help me out, build my channel um, as I continue growing up uh, the tiers. Um, I get a few more perks through the YouTube platform, which will help me connect with you guys and continue to build my channel into something, hopefully, uh, rather grand is the, is the plan. So again, my name is Paul Michael. This is Challenge to Build. I appreciate you watching and hanging out with me today. I will see you in the next video.